Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about open games that today we're going to be playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. The last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and started our second trial. We're defending Maya Faye and Gumshoe testified and he said that the victim wrote down the killer's name but she died instantly and then Edgeworth came in and said that he had an updated autopsy report. So we're just going to go ahead and get into this. Uh... Go ahead and skip to the time on the screen or go down to the description and look for the correct timestamp to get to the actual gameplay part of the video. Uh, but I just want to note a few things before we get in. First of all, I was replaying through this. Actually, I'll get to that later. First of all, I got a computer set up in my room because before I would record videos in a computer down in the living room. And so I could only like record one video at a time because, you know, I'd record like a 20 minute video and I didn't want to stop like the rest of my family from doing something for so long. And so I've got it up here. So it might sound a bit different and I'm still trying to get all of the audio bugs worked out. Second of all, uh, I was replaying through the opening of this game to get back to where I was because I lost all my progress and I accidentally clicked this text box twice text box twice when I was talking to Gumshoe, and it gave a completely different thing. I'll go ahead and show it up on screen right now. But anyways, that's all I wanted to say, so let's go ahead and get into the game right now. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Now I have to do her lines. As before, I won't be doing like a voice or anything like that. I'll just do my normal voice. And if I find any lines like too uncomfortable for me to say, then I'll just skip over. Witness, your name, please. April May, at your service. Order. An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Ah, uh, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in the court. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was, like, in my hotel room. I checked in right after lunch. And this, hot and this hotel room is directly across from the Fane Co. office? Mm, that's right. I'm not saying that. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Witnesses account. It was like 9 at night. I looked around. Ugh. It was like 9 o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know? And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one, with the, one, the one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. And the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and, and she hit her. I'm gonna pick up a bad habit of saying like a lot because that was kind of a bad habit I had already and then this is going to bring it back. Then a woman with long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. Ugh. Huh. Well, your honor, I see it is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any- Wait, your honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Mia Fey's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Hey, how dare you? Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination, if only because I have a feeling that Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. So we'll do the usual, just pressing around. Why did you do that? Huh? Why? Like, why what? Why did you look out the window? Were you expecting to see something? Oh, well, um, gee. What, that's it? She can't get out of this question that easily. I sort of, you know... 
I had a feeling. Well, I have a feeling he's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should press a little harder on this one? I don't know if I mentioned this before, but rule one of Ace Attorney, always press harder. Let's see how far I can run. Surely you must have had a reason to look out your window at that time of night. I... Ooh. Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness. B badgering You insist on needling her with these trivial questions. I really don't think it should be allowed. Order. Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Poor girl. What about poor me? He looked out the window. Window. What did you see next? Sorry if I seem a bit out of it, I just had to do a bunch of running up and down the stairs because I was getting everything set up. Uh, the woman with long hair. That was Miss Mia Fey. Mm-hmm. Slender, sort of. Well, some people might say pretty if that's your thing. Your thing? And the person attacking her? How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know. She had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I just know, okay? There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short, girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. He is right. Hold on a minute! That testimony stinks! What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that... Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? I yes what is the meaning? Somebody tell me, because I'm clueless. About this, I mean. Okay, if you had really witnessed my client, Maya Fey, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo is far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say the, to that, Miss May? What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessarily necessary. Miss May... The court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'm not saying that either. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. Witnesses account. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That, that clock. Um, the kind of statue clock. The thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? Well, it certainly does startle me. And we'll get to that a bit later. I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. So earlier, Phoenix said the testimony is bogus, and whenever I uh, hear that word, I think of the guy from Punch-Out. I forget what his name was. So, you saw me then, too? Of course. I'd remember that spiky hair anywhere. S spiky The witness will refrain from personal attacks on the defense attorney. Uh, oh, oh, no, I'm not saying that. Very well, continue. Victim, the woman dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Is that right as in your right as in you as... Is that right as in your right as you looked from the hotel? Um, which hand do I hold my knife in again? Right, it was in my right hand, right? Satisfied, Mr. Right? Please continue. And the girl in the hip clothes ran after her. Also, take a shot every time they say right. How convenient for you that you remember her hippie clothes. 
That's what you- I mean, that's what she was wearing. Oh, and her hair was all done up in a bun. <sighs> what happened then? And then she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. Where did this weapon come from? She picked it up from the desk. I see. What sort of weapon was it? That that clock. Um, the statuey clock. The thinker, I think. A uh, clock? Didn't this come up in another testimony recently? Well, don't look so sour, Mr. Lawyer. You can't win them all. No, but I have a feeling I'm on to something now. The previous testimony must have been what Edgeworth wanted her to say. So this was the testimony in her own words? Time to press and squeeze the truth out of her. Figuratively, of course. And so, the interesting thing, I, earlier I said the test, the detail of her testimony startled me. And that's because she states that the thinker is a clock. And the interesting thing is, and if you watch the first case, this doesn't look like a clock at all. Objection! Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. I'm not saying that either. You just said that this statue of the thinker was a clock, but there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder. Order, order. Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course, you will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Whew, that was close. If you stopped me there, the trial would be over. So, what happens now? But what happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That's... Because I heard it? Yes, I heard it say the time. So, you've been to the law offices of Fay & Co. N no, hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard from my hotel room. Hee <laughs> hee. Ugh. The law offices of Fay & Co, where the murder took place, are very close to the hotel. She could have easily heard the clock. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that, that, that the clock in question rang. That clock is missing its clockwork. How could you possibly... Just have a look, as soon as you can. Oh, see anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. Well, Miss May? Quite the show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow, he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clock clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Ho ho, impossible, of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening, and now I'll show you the proof you like so much. 
The evidence that proves that when the clockwork was removed. Take a look at this. Mm, that's a very cute cell phone. Ooh, the girly phone. W wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order, order. The defendant's cell phone. This wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it? Good detective, better remember he's up for evaluation soon. My heart goes out to you, Edgeworth. Not. Let's hear the conversation. So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Ah, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. Your Honor, I think this recording makes it clear that the clockwork was already gone. And this was recorded in the morning before the witness even arrived at her hotel. M m m well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know what that weapon was a clock? Well... Well, isn't it obvious? I saw the clock before. Um, what store is that again? I go to so many. Whoops, I forgot. So the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? The witness claimed she had seen it before, but this, is di this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world, and the one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible! Everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time we went shopping for a better excuse. Oh, excuse is not on sale today? Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. <laughs> oh? Oh, 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 Silly me. D did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. It's scary. Certainly. <laughs> Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. No, not the attorney's badge. The wiretap. Have a look at this. Th 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 that uh. I found this in Miss May's room. M Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim, Miss Mia Fey's phone, were you not? Ooh. Ooh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the fence truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have one thing to prove. 
Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. Proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to for me. Again? What's in it this time? What's it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... I... Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May! Shut up, all of you! What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You... you lawyer! It's no fair. All of you g g g ganging up on me like that. Oh, so I'm... Is that it? Is that it? That did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't tippity tapping ir irrelevant? Gah, she's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of speech, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? Ha! Huh, I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking, I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Damn, she's good. Uh, can't be serious, no way. Way, I say, way. Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Oomph. <laughs> Okay, so the killing happened around 9 o'clock at night, right? Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. Room service? Ice coffee, I believe it was. Ice coffee, coffee, you know, like normal coffee, but cold. And if you don't drink it quick, the ice melts, and then you just have regular cold coffee. I ice coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. So, where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Fey, commit murder. No, they're going to just let her walk away. There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Uh, um, well, come on, think of something. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious there, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunken quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. Therefore, you must accept the verdict of guilty from Miss Maya Fay. That is my condition. What? I better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. 
Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Alright, I've got nothing to lose. Except for, well, everything. Understood, I accept your condition. Oof. Fool. You fell right into my trap. Uh-oh. Um, um, wait. Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. And that's where I'll go ahead and end it off. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and call the hotel bellboy to the stand, as the judge says. And we'll just see what he has to say, what he knows about Miss April May, and we'll try to see if we can glean anything from the testimony. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!